Hey everybody, it's Matthew Reinhardt! Yay! Hi, I'm Professor Reinhardt! Yay! Maybe you're not clapping. Hey, it's me, Matthew, and we're back to the master class. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. I gotta, I gotta pull this. There we go. We got this. There we go. Hello. I'm a professor, Professor Matthew Reinhardt. Welcome, my students. Welcome. That's, I really look like that. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the pop-up master class. We're back in session. The mechanism that we're going to learn today is sort of a weird one. And, and, and I guess what it is, is it's a reverse action um, sort of pull tab slash layer. So we're going to call that... Um, uh, what should I call it? Um, well, it, what, basically what it does is when you open a book page, instead of things moving with it like you know usual with a layer, I guess it's a reverse action layer. And what it does is it actually pushes outward. So um, usually what happens when you open up a pop-up, um, well, it's hard to explain. I guess I should show you, right? Let's bring out a book. This is an older book I did with Maurice Sendak quite a few years ago. <laughs> a long, long time ago. And let me show you a pop in here. Let's see if I can open it. Okay. This is one of those reverse action um, pops. And it's actually, it's basically based on a pull tab, but it does reverse action motion. So as, as this page here is pulling that way, right? It's pulling that way the reverse action movement layer is moving the opposite way, right? So you move, you move your main um, page going one way and this mechanism will move the opposite way, all right? And here's another book that uses that. This is, um, it's the Greek version, I think. No, wait, I don't know what language this is. Um, but this one is uh, fairies and magical creatures and there is a pop, it's not this one. It's this. Okay, so these are these goblins and um, um, little house elves that are inside these uh, cupboards, right? And this, we're seeing this door open, right? Watch the door open. So it's, this page is actually pulling that way, but the reverse action for this part is opening the opposite way. See how that works? So it's opening the opposite way. Right, and that's because there's this that's pushing it, and there's reasons why all this is moving. So let's let's just learn about that. Let's learn about it. So it, let's call this thing. It's a reverse action layer. All right. So let's get started. We're gonna use a piece of cardstock. We're gonna fold it in half. This is gonna be our base page. All right. And I think today we're going to uh, what? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a big I'm going to use my pencil and I'm just going to mark the center um, where the center line is just so you can see it. Make, I'm going to make a pretty big layer to go there. Let's see. I want to use, and the reason why I'm using all these different colors is um, so you can see the difference. So we're just going to make just a big rectangle. Use my scissors. Now, If you want to make sure that this this re this square rectangle whatever doesn't look like these these are parallel and these are parallel right what do we do let's just use the edge of our paper here and um, sometimes I cheat doing it this way but it's not cheating it's just a, a a better way to find it without having to get like sort of a square or whatever take my pencil here I'm just gonna mark. Because we know this, this edge of this nice, clean piece of paper, um, we know that's a 90-degree angle, right? So, or at least I do. You, you should know it, too. You better know it. You better know by now. These are all my little cheating um, tricks that I use if I don't have the right kind of measuring tool. So I just made that a 90-degree angle, right? So I'm just going to cut it off very carefully. There we go. And then I'm going to use that edge right there because we know that we know that's straight. So we need to make sure that this edge is perpendicular, right? 
and then the same with this one. Well, did I do that right? Let's do that right. Because I couldn't tell which, which mark was right. Okay, so there's that. Let me cut it. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we got to make sure that last one is right. And I know this seems... I just want to make sure that all my angles... That one looks pretty good. I think we're okay. All right, I just like to make sure that all my angles are right so that that's 90, that's 90, that's 90, and that's 90. So it's, so, you know, it's the right kind of um, rectangle or square. Well, all squares are rectangles, right? They're just rectangles with all equal sides. Yeah, but you didn't know that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to have this. This is going to be what we're going to base our reverse action layer on. And again... Um, here's, well, let's make the layer and let's just fold, let's go ahead and fold one of the sides, right? So we've got one of these sides and I'm going to, I'm going to mark it so that you can see it with my pencil. There you go. So you can see that. All right. And what do we do? We line it up right here. See, it's going to, it's going to be, um, right across the, the center fold. So we mark it there and there, right? And then we tape it down using our tape, just like you know how this works. We've done layers before. Super easy. Super easy. And with the reverse action um, layer, this is what we're going to do. Okay, so we first need to have sort of a structure, of a, a layer structure to build off of. Next, we are going to use an X-Acto knife carefully and we're going to cut a slit just about right here just like that okay get a little peekaboo let me see in there all right and we're going to make um we're going to make a strut let me just cut this and it's going to be doubled up all right so i'm going to take this piece here this rectangle some double stick and I want to doubled up sort of, it's going to be a, it's going to be sort of a, hmm, what's the word I want to use? It's going to be a, well, I guess like a, it's going to be a strong sort of um, rectangle that's, that's a, sort of a strut. And what's going to happen is we're going to feed it in through here. And it's going to push. See how it, see how when it's, when I feed it up underneath this surface, and we'll tape it, look, I'm going to, eventually, I'm going to tape it there at the base page. You'll watch that the pink, the layer, moves, but this doesn't. And we're going to attach it to something so that it, so that it pushes outward. But we have to measure this first. This just can't be any measurement. It has to be, at least for what we're doing, we're going to make it so that this, it's this distance long from here to here. So I'm going to mark it. And the reason why, oh, by the way, the reason why this is doubled up was we need it to be strong. We need it to be able to push. So, and we also, because it's a reverse layer, it has some of the same measurements as a layer does. So, but, it, but they're actually going to crisscross. And we've done something like, kind of like this before in the past, but not quite using it this way, where it's sort of a reverse side of crossover layer or something like that. There we go. See? The width from there to there is the same as the width from there to there. And I'm just going to pull this up real quick to show you that I'm going to slip this right through. Not in there. And I'm going to use some tape and I'm going to tape it down to the center right here. All right. And then we're going to just flip this over and tape it down, back down in place. So watch. See how it moves? Ooh, it's so surprising. What does that, right? We are going to make, we're going to sort of make a flap that is going to, to tape onto this section here. I'm just going to cut a little rectangle. That rectangle looks pretty good, actually. I'm looking at it on this. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not bad. This edge is a little off, but it doesn't matter. All right. And it's going to go, we're going to tape it. We're going to use some one-sided tape. See how I'm taping that? 
that sticky side up. And we're gonna tape this just onto this edge, just like that, okay? Look at that, look, look, it pushes it. Ah, look at that, now you're gonna see, and then we're gonna tape it down. Now, so you see this is all flat? We're gonna tape this, this flap to the edge of our pusher. Now watch. Look, it pushes outward, right? great as it is. Now, one of the things that you gotta really be careful with, with, with like making this, this flap, it sometimes, it can't be, it can't be super tall. Like, if we were to make it, I don't know, this tall, and I'm just gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how certain things wouldn't work. All right, so we're just gonna do this. Okay, look at this. Would that work? No, because look, even if it did, even if it could close, look, it would get all crumpled. Look, that's not good. That's not good. So you have to make sure that this flap that we're pushing outward, that needs to be, you know, it needs to be, you need to have room between it and the closing page. So you're really gonna have to look and see. I don't really want mine that tall. I just wanted to show you, you have to be careful of that, all right? So, we have that. And we wanna tape this to it. This is our panel, we want it to move outward. I think what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna put some double, or this is um, just regular tape. And I'm just gonna tape it, this is sticky side up. You see it was so sticky I was pulling it. This, we're gonna just tape it, let's tape it right here. Or we could just tape it underneath. I'm gonna tape it, Oops. already stuck, okay. Okay, so let's look what happens here. Well, okay, that's cool. That's really cool, actually. Look, that's moving out. Now, the thing that's not good with this is there's no way, this isn't staying in one place, right? Like it's, it's, it could turn that way, it could flop all over. So we need to build something here, right? To, to base it down to the base page or to, to make sure it's attached to the base page or we need to attach it to here. Let's, what we could just do is we could just make a little rectangle that is this height right here and attach it to this edge. So we need to make uh, another layer to, to keep that stabilized. I'm just gonna use, this is just my, my um, scrap here. I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna make a little stabilizer. And we're gonna make sure that its height is the same. That's not quite the same, we gotta cut it down. almost the same. I made it a little too short. It's not good. That's not good. All right, let's use our pencil this time. You can see like sometimes when I'm doing these pop-ups, I'm kind of holding it and moving it around like it's like it's like I'm doing a little bit of a surgery on the pop. And that's, that's kind of like what I do all the time. And then I'm going to attach one of these little struts. It's just another layer. We're just making a layer, but these are stabilizers for our reverse action layer. So I'm going to tape that to that edge right there. And that should stabilize our, um, our panel that's moving outward. All right. So see how that works. Now it folds in. Look at that. Now it folds. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted this to move outward. And that's what that does. This pusher, rather it's a pull, well, yeah, it's a pusher because it's, it's, it's anchored to the center. And the thing that actually moves, it's, the thing that's moving is actually this layer. This section is moving it, it's being pulled. And then, see this, this edge is actually being, watch it, it's, it goes from being here and it's being pulled inward and that pusher is pushing this whole structure outward. Look at that. And you know what I'm gonna do? I have an extra one of these struts because I just don't want it to be flopping around. 
So we're going to do, and what's cool about this is, if we wanted to, I'm just going to attach this. Now, if we wanted our panel to move out a little bit more, if we made this distance, if we made this distance from here to there, taller, this, this panel would move out further. All right, but I'm going to show you some measurements that are all the same. So th these are things that when you're looking at things and you're trying to figure out, you know, oh, which parts should measure what, this is how this should work. So let me show you. See this um, layer base, this distance from here to here, can you see that? Right, that distance, we're going to call that A. This distance from here to here should also be A. Right? So th those distances are the same. That's why it's, it's like a layer, but it's reverse action because it crosses through each other. Right? Okay, so let's look at some other measurements that should be the same. This pusher that we, you know, see it built under there, see it crosses over. So this pusher's distance, the entire distance, um, which, is, which goes underneath, that distance is B, and this distance is B, the, the top of our, so this distance from here to here should be the same as the distance from this edge of this pusher, the one that goes underneath and goes to there. Does that make sense? All right, so now we've made one side of one of these, uh, you know, panels. We want to make two. So let's make one going this way. And we're going to do it. It's going to have the same measurements, but this time we're going to do it underneath like it's underneath the page. Okay? So I'll push outward as well. Um, and the same, th I think the same amount as this one. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to make it go underneath the page or at least underneath the surface here. If we, we might have to build onto this, but we won't build a layer. We're not going to use a layer this time. But we will need to make a, a pull tab um, to get the, the, the power behind it. So let's get started making that pull tab. And let's, we're gonna, it's gonna be a doubled over pull tab and I'm just gonna make it, it doesn't, it needs to just be, we're gonna make it a little longer and then we'll, we'll snip it when we need to snip it, okay? So we're gonna just take this piece of cardstock, double it over, let's use some double stick tape or you could use glue if you wanted to glue it to, to each other. Basically what we're doing is we're just making a long tab strut whatever you want to call it, make sure that it's, um, you know, make sure that the, there's right angles on all the edges here and that, that each side is parallel, like these opposite sides are parallel and these opposite sides are parallel. I'm pretty good at like eyeing it after all this time. And what we're going to do this time, we are going to tape this edge of our pusher, our tab here, our strut. I've taped it right there. See that? So look at how it moves. It gets pulled that way. It's like a floppy, it's like one, a one-sided layer, all right? So that's what we're going to start with. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just, I think I will take another piece of paper and we are going to hide this, we're going to hide this strut under a piece of paper. And maybe what I'll do is I'll take a piece of white paper so we don't see it. Ooh, mysterious. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna take this piece of paper, this rectangle, and this is going to, we're, we're gonna hide the strut. And when you do this, you need to make sure that we see, see how this strut moves? Okay, so when it's closed, that strut goes to about, on the opposite side, it goes to about there. Right, so that's where it ends up. So we need, we cannot cover our, we can't cover that strut on this side beyond that point. Let's see, did I make this right? You know what, I need another size piece of paper. I need it more square. I make mistakes. This is, a, now I make mistakes constantly. So 
Don't be worried if you make mistakes when you're making your pop-ups, please. Okay, so we are gonna tape this down. What I'm gonna do for, for right now is I'm just gonna tape it. <sighs> Let's see what's the best. I'm gonna tape it just over the edge here. I'm gonna tape it down. I want it to be kind of a loose cover of our, our, our pull strut. See, now watch, see it's gonna, I'm gonna watch it, see how it, it pulls, but it's still under here and it's pretty loose. Now, this is kind of tight. I think what I'm gonna do is use my, um, what a mess over here. What's the matter with you, Matt? You got a messy desk. We are gonna pull this up a bit. This, this paper, it needs this little cover. It needs to have some space. Now, it should be flat, but we need to have, like, there's some looseness here because we're gonna build something off of here um, and we need to make sure that it can push up a little, the paper can push up so that the mechanism can work well. And I think what I'll do is I'll show you what we're gonna do on the next. So this is where, let's make sure also that we've got this edge is parallel. This edge here, needs to be parallel to the center fold in the base page. Yeah, that's much better. And what we're gonna have to do, I'm gonna mark this here, and I'm gonna just pull this up. Now this is where this, this piece is going to attach to, see, look at when it moves. Watch how it moves. When it moves, when it's closed, see the other pop is getting in the way. Look how far it goes. Excuse me, too much soda. Look how that moves, all right? So, this this strut is gonna move, and we, this strut, we need to make, we, this is where it attaches. So, we need to make a measurement that is, let's see, what can we use to measure it? I'm gonna just use a scrap piece of paper to get the measurement. This is my other cheat. I use a scrap piece like this, and I mark, from here to here, that's this distance for our layer, right? And then we're gonna just go right here. Let's move in close. Let's get in there. Get in there. This is where it's gonna attach to our little cover flap. From here to here is the same. Okay, and I'm gonna mark it on the bottom too so I get it right. Okay, so where is, I'm, I'm not even using my rulers, I'm just using like pieces of paper to measure things. That's a little off. All right, and right there is where there's gonna be a fold. Now you can use all kinds of stuff to fold. Um, now this is, this is a double, uh, this is, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut it right there. And then, I'm gonna tape it back to itself. And the reason why I'm doing that is, it's never a good idea when you're making, um, when you're folding mechanisms, to glue two pieces or, or, or tape two pieces together and then fold both of them together at the same time. It's not a good idea um, because it screws up the way that folds will work. You, you only really want one layer for where there's a fold. So what I'll do instead is I'll just tape this back together and it'll work a lot better. Sometimes when there's two pieces of paper and then you fold it, you two pieces together, glue together or tape together and then you fold it, the, the fold won't um, happen. It won't work as well for you. So um, taping it like this, we've, we it, see how much looser it is. If this was, um, if this was just folded right there. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't fold as nicely and as loosely. All right, so that folds there. This is all flat. Now we're going to tape this edge right here. All right, now let's see what this does. Before it just moved, remember? All right, let's see what it does. Let's pull back and see what it does. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm just going to cut this off for just a minute so it doesn't, so it doesn't um, get in the way of things. I'll, I'll, I promise I'll, glue, I'll put it back. All right, let's show what this does. It closes and opens. Look at that. It's almost doing the same thing. Look, it's opening and moving it out that way. And look, it's got a really tall, the distance here, this is tall. So it really moves out far. That's pretty cool. What's great about it is 
it's actually built off and it's hidden underneath this. But you'll notice, look, when it opens and closes, look how much it bows the paper. It needs to be able to have the room on both sides, I think. Right. So what are we going to do? We want to attach our panel and have it move outward, right? So let's, let's look at this here. Let's make, let's make a rectangle that's this distance. Let's make sure that it's, it looks like, I just want to make sure that it's a little bit more, yeah, that looks like it's lined up properly. Um, let's make another rectangle that is the same height. So I'm just going to make a clone kind of of it. Ooh. Attack of the pop-up clones. I did that already. Whee. All right. So, so see how those are the same distance? And I'm just going to, I think I'll tape it right here to my, to my, um, my fake page, right? Look. So it's just going to go on here and make sort of a layer. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape, use some tape and I'm gonna have it sticky side up here. I'm gonna sticky side up here and I'm gonna take my panel, tape it there, and watch. Now, look at that! It's getting pushed outward, look at that! So now when we open, oops, now we gotta do this side too. Oh, remember I, I cut it? Oopsies. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So now, look at this is two ways that we can get opposite. So these are reverse action layers, right? They're actually layers that cross and go under each. Look at how that works. They're basically the same thing. One side uses a layer. It's built off of a layer that's built onto your base page. And the other one is built off of sort of a page cover. Now you could, if you wanted, you could cut a slit in the base page, have it go under and do this. However, you would need to cut sort of a flap. If you were gonna do it, you know, you'd have to cut something that's, let's see, it kind of looks like. You'd have to cut something that kind of looks like this. So you'd have to cut, you know, some area here out of your base page so that that can go through. I always use paper on top of it. That's why I use, like using the layer because there's more space to breathe. But this also works. And it doesn't cause, you know, that, that cover to bow as much. But look, they both work great. And look at how those panels, now, they, they really push out. They break the edges of the page. I love pop-ups when people do this, when, uh, uh, when something breaks the um, page, um, the trim from the top or the bottom or side, I love when things go outward. Like I love when things get bigger than the page. That's really exciting. So look at what we did. Now, one of the things, this is just flopping all over the place. Now, what should I do with that? Well, why don't I just go ahead and make another look sort of attachment here, use some of my scrap and make another like sort of layer brace or whatever. This is just gonna, this is just gonna attach to my base page. It's it's basically just a continuation of this layer, right? But we're gonna put it up here, and let's see if it works. It's gonna put it on this edge. Since I've got one here, I'm gonna do one up here. So that way, it it you know moves properly, right? Okay, so let's check and see if that works. Does that work? Holy moly, that works! Look at that. So even though our one little pusher's down here, it's still pushing out. Look at that. Now sometimes you have to be careful with these though, because watch, sometimes they fight against each other. So sometimes you're gonna have to experiment to see what you can do, you know, to see what works for you. But this is, so this is reverse action layer. So they're both going two different ways. And I, ooh, there's two different ways that we can do it. Well, hey students, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make the reverse action layer. It's really, it's really kind of cool. Um, I gotta use this more often. Um, thanks for watching the pop-up masterclass with me, your professor, Matthew Reinhardt. And um, hey, if you like the video, hit 
the like button below. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, you know, let me know in the comments or on my website or um, on the Instagrams or uh, I, I got to get back on the TikTok. I'm not good with the TikTok because I got so many other things. Oh, and Facebook, um, pop up by Matthew Reinhardt. You can always let me know that way in a messenger. Um, hey, thanks for coming to class. I'll see you next time. Don't be late. Don't be late. Bye, everyone.